Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on The Real Estate Podcast. The goal of this podcast is to help you, fellow agents, learn from other agents and learn tactics and strategies to grow your business. I'm Todd Sumney, the Chief Industry Officer for HomeSmart, joined today by... Rich LaRue, Vice President of Corporate Brokerages. And our very special guest, we are so excited to have with us today from our Sacramento HomeSmart, HomeSmart I Care, Breeze Singh is with us today. Say hello to everyone, Breeze. Hey, everyone. How are you guys? <laughs> hey, Breeze. <laughs> hey, Glad to have I, you here today. I've actually been looking forward to this uh, recording here for about three weeks now since it uh, first came on the calendar. Because for the audience, we have quite a success story to share with you today. And it's a success story built out of, in my mind, servanthood, skills, knowledge, passion, and smart tactics, smart ways to grow your business. And so Breeze, I'm looking forward to you sharing your story and sharing ideas and tactics with other agents. And I guess I'd kind of like to start with you and I having a conversation one year, um, actually I think it was two years ago after your awards banquet. Yeah. And um, we were celebrating, you know, look at all those awards you have on your back wall and all the transactions that I see there behind you on the wall. You've built such a phenomenal business. But at one point, you were not in real estate and you actually came to this country um, without a business already built up. And yeah. you have worked your way into leadership roles in the National Association of Realtors Young Professionals Network, YPN, in the local association with the uh, Sacramento Association of Realtors, the uh, Sacramento Board, and just in your own brokerage, you are such a leader and you do a high volume of business. So I guess if you could take us back to the beginning, where it all started, tell us your story. You want me to start from when my mom met my dad? <laughs> well, uh, you nah, did say take, it all, back take it all the way all back the way as back. far as you want to go. <laughs> so, yeah, I moved here in 2008, me and Raj, my brother. Uh, he's my younger brother. Me and him have been together in school also, like, obviously one year apart. Right. But um, when he, he and I moved here, we had just completed our master's. And uh, we had the opportunity to settle down in U.S. We had a green card. Uh, and so we not everybody has that. It's difficult to get green card. For those who have moved here, they know that. Uh, so when we moved here, our goal was to establish a business from uh, in U.S. We already had a business. My mom, uh, she was running that business. It was a shipping business, international shipping, for freight forwarding. And our goal was to establish a similar business over here. So it was a struggle in the beginning uh, where my mom was sending uh, money from India. So like uh, you probably have heard of people coming in with $10 or $100. Like I was, I'm one, pretty much one of those guys. My mom was sending us money from India. Uh, she was earning in rupees and spending in dollars. And that's really hard, especially let's say if, Right now, the Indian rupee is worth $1 is equal to 85 rupees. And back then, I think $1 was equal to 45 rupees. So okay. it was pretty hard. Wow. Okay. So we came here. We established our business. Um, my cousins were supporting me too uh, by like getting me any lease that they could. So me and Raj, we worked on our, uh, we have worked on our business and we established from scratch. Uh, shipping business and also we started wholesaling and distributing telecom products uh, to the local stores and at any given time I've always had at least two businesses that I'm running even right now I have like uh, right now I have three businesses that I'm running but yeah two businesses at any given time I've never had like anything less than two business and you in I will always say that real estate is like nobody knows exactly what's going to happen in real estate. Everything was good. Everything was goody goody. And then interest rate went, went up. Everybody is like, now people are dropping off uh, from real estate like flies. And you always need two sets of income. 
very honestly you need to start uh, saving money and like investing that so i had uh, the wholesale and uh, wholesale and, uh, and distribution business of telecom and the internet ship- shipping business and because of the wholesale and dis- uh, wholesale business i me and raj had a network of 800 store owners in uh, north california and these clients of ours they trusted us and they pushed us to get into real estate and i joined i joined real estate really? in 2015 tell yep. us more about that so how did that come about my there were some of my clients some of my clients were like basically ready to pay for the for my education too they were like we trust you like i was always helping out me and raj were always helping out uh, people finding buyers for their stores or selling uh, like helping them sell their stores or uh, like uh, buyers that were looking for stores and they would let us know hey uh, by the way if you go around and see some see us uh, uh, ask around like if anybody wants to sell their store let me know so we, and then we started said like we were thinking like why are we not making money off of that people do this for a living why are we not making money and there were other other real estate uh, agents at that time in this business and a lot of people did not have a good reputation they were too shady or some uh, stuff like that and uh, our clients were like we trust you guys you've been we trust you so much that we know exactly that you won't uh, screw us at any time like everything every transaction we have done done with you we we don't even count your we don't even count your cards we don't even do anything like we trust you guys so much so why don't you get into this and one of my brother's client is um one of my brother's client is like that he has in last two years he's bought like at, at least 8 million dollars worth of real estate from him wow. and he was one of the one uh, he was one of the ones that was pushing us hard a lot uh, i have uh, other clients too i'm actually uh, reconnected with one of my uh, clients from uh, the wholesale distribution business and he is buying he's leasing a business right now he's looking to buy another gas another liquor store and uh he has all, already given me leads to sell other stores too so i mean like just within two within like last two months i've gotten at least a couple of billion dollar worth of business from him good client well, well you know your story uh resonates with me because when i'm with you and with raj you're two of my favorite people in the whole world I have so much fun with raj too um and you make everyone feel special and one thing that we've talked about rich you and i mm-hmm. when we talk about things that separate top realtors from other realtors um you know one day we went to lunch and it was with isam coleman the broker owner mm-hmm. of the franchise and uh breeze and raj and you know i'm in from out of town and breeze his phone just wouldn't quit ringing during lunch but he answered it every single time but he was off the phone very quickly too and very attentive but every time he answered the phone and said hi there i i saw your your name on my phone i wanted to answer but i'm at a very important lunch right now i can't you know talk but can i call you as soon as my lunch is over and you know a lot of agents just let phone calls go to voicemail they right. don't answer And, and I, they seem to stay there for days. Mhm. And sometimes yeah. they'll use the excuse while well, I'm with a client or I'm with someone right. sure. and they need to know that I'm, you know, more important. And I guess there's an opposite point of view. They're seeing your phone ringing and you're not answering and they're assuming, you know, is that the way you like I I wasn't offended at all. Actually, I felt very special because he said, you know, I'm I'm here at lunch. I have with a, you know, with an important person. I can't talk to you right now, but I wanted to take your call too. I'll call you as soon as I'm done is that okay and then he got right back to it. Hmm. And so I just wonder if these subtle little habits that he and his brother have are part of the reason why people trust them so much. You're good at digging into this stuff. Dig into why <laughs> ask him why ask him why I'll tell you why so much. <laughs> I'll tell you why without even digging that much I'll I'll very gladly share that. uh the business the whole center distribution business that we were in it's uh, it was phone cards calling cards and calling cards uh, for international like international locations the that business had such a notoriety that a lot of companies would sell these cards and then just go out of business okay overnight file bankruptcy come back next day with the same acronym but a different name 
and i know this one company that has done that like t- over 10 times filed 10 bank different bankruptcies collected all the money everybody lost money except for them they made they made a lot of money right. uh and they they came out with the same acronym but a different name like a different uh, name but like the uh, the starting letters are pretty much the same yeah. and these there are companies like that or uh, that were in phone card industry and what we would do is we would take we would eat that loss okay we would eat that loss and we would exchange those cards for our clients wow. because i knew like we can like uh, we can uh, get over that loss fast that's fine like we just need more volume that's all and because when we did that these clients referred me to other businesses too because they were like oh you know what this guy he stands by his cards he stands by his products so if anything happens i don't have to worry about it i give him a call he comes back he he comes in and he collects the uh, the cards and he gets uh, replaces the cards for me i'm happy with him so that's why it kind of like helped out a lot for us that's great that's an awesome story well you know um so going back to my lunch story um from your point of view why are you answering your phone every single time mm, that's because if they if they are uh, calling me they need me right now and i need them too like the day i start being i uh, start acting pricey that's the that's the day my doom will start very honestly i've seen that happen there was a, a company over here that was doing a lot of business with uh, one of these um online companies a big uh, name website that was buying and selling houses during pandemic and uh, this company they were listing the houses but they were never picking up calls for any of their agents and i knew one of the uh, the agents personally guess what that person is no longer in my good books mm-hmm. okay i do not have a good relation with them if they ever uh, put an offer on my uh, house like a, a house that i have listed i'm going to give that reputation to i'm going to share that reputation with my client and i'll be like hey this is what's happening like i don't i don't understand like uh, i don't see them falling through with uh, whatever they're going to do uh, it will be a, d- a difficult deal so if you want to work with them that's it's on you but like don't come uh, don't come to t- uh, to me afterwards like oh uh, yeah you were right or anything like i can't help you on that and my reputation is all that i have my reputation is all that i have i have built it i have worked on it uh, when i send out an uh, offer um, the other agents they want to work with me so they will help me out in getting that offer accepted and right. that's because of my reputation. That's awesome. And and to give the audience a little bit of idea of the level of expertise that you operate at and the number of clients that you help and serve, give us just some ballpark figures in 2020, 21, 22, approximately like how much how much business were you doing? Sales volume, <laughs> number of transactions, size of transactions, just ballparks. 2020 um i don't have the exact numbers but like yeah 2020 i was around like uh 30 million and uh 30 33 million in transaction 21 it was around 45 22 we have 70 million in transactions wow so and uh we i didn't even realize that uh realize this but uh we were ranked as one of the top large team in 21 and 22 by Tom Ferry and Real Trends right. in California. Right. Yeah. So right. I didn't even like, I wasn't even working for that. I was just working for making my clients happy, getting the, getting these deals done. Uh, and the deal that we do is from, uh, we treat every single agent, every single client of ours um, as a million dollar client. If they are buying a $200,000 house, they're going to get the same level of expertise, same level of dedication from me as if uh, they're buying a $5 million uh, property. So I've done deals from uh, 6 million, like from 200, 100,000 actually, not even 100. I've done like the least, the smallest one I've done is like $40,000. The $40,000 one to $6.3 million. That's quite a range. That is. Would you say that you do primarily residential or commercial? 
uh, because I, I do hear a hint of commercial uh, we do, in this. And, we I, do, and I also know the business that you do. So, tell so our we audience. do do a, 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 a bit of a commercial. Uh, 2020, 2021, it was mostly primarily residential. 22, mm -hmm. it kind of like moved more towards commercial side. So right now, I would say a good mix of um, 60, 60 to 65 percent residential and 30 to 35 percent, uh, 40 to 40, uh, 35 to 40 percent uh, commercial. There's a lot of uh, agents out there are in, in our audience uh, who get stars in their eyes over uh, the size of commercial transactions. Uh, what would you say to somebody uh, who is, well, let's say, a, a primarily a, a residential agent and they want to break into commercial? Do you have any words of wisdom or things uh, that you would do differently or just anything at all that you want to throw in uh, to uh, that discussion? Commercial transactions are a different beast at all together be ready to spend $2,000 just to get a, uh, a few websites uh, entry, like logins and all that stuff uh, that are basically the metro list. It's not one of your other metro lists easily like that uh, that you get from your local association. Mm -hmm. These are metro lists and they are expensive. These are commercial metro lists. They are privatized. They are ex definitely expensive. So like Costa, LoopNet, Crexy, all these stuff, like they are really expensive. So you're going to easily spend at least like a thousand to two thousand dollars a month. So you should have that capital ready to invest. And if you're not doing that, you're not doing yourself a favor. You're not going to do your clients a favor. Second thing, be very, 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 very patient with these commercial <laughs> transactions. Mm -hmm. I have one that I was working on the listing since last October. And we got the listing in January. We listed the property in uh, towards the end of January. February, we got first week, we got eight offers. We, that property, we accepted one offer and we were dealing with the attorneys on the commercial side, uh, the seller's attorney. And the seller's attorney got us the drafted PSA in September. So February till September, no movement. And I'm like, calling him i'm talking to the other agent calming him down like we'll get it just uh, just be be really like you know we have to be patient just uh, per persevere and that's all and it paid off we the buyer stayed on it we got it in escrow in september uh, and then in october uh, we like we basically got it into es escrow in october september we got the first first time that we got the draft or the purchase sale agreement and October we got it uh, in escrow and it's going to close sometime in March next year. So a one so year basically a year and a half start to finish. It it can. Sometime yeah. it can happen. Yeah. And yeah. there's no pre approval letters. It's literally a wild west. <laughs> right. and that is commercial that's a that is commercial it's literally a wild west yeah and that's exactly why i think what uh these lawsuits that are happening at nar level are trying to do to the residential too they want us to be a wild west also okay. touchy topic i know <laughs> yep um you know the, the audience here listening is our fellow home smart agents as well as other real estate agents in the industry um, and oftentimes, you know, Rich was talking about agents having stars in their eyes about commercial transactions. They also have stars in their eyes when they see agents like you on stage every year at the national level and at the local level winning award after award after award. And um, I'm sure you get asked, you know, what should I do to be like you? What did you do? Like, if you could give a couple tactics ideas for agents that are new in the business and how to grow their business to be successful like you as well as you know agents that have been around for a while that just want to take their business to the next level can you name off three or four or five things that you think agents i should could do need to do to be successful i can certainly name off a few of them uh, first of all like you said and i've said it last year at the at the panel also answer your calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you yeah. are losing an opportunity when you don't answer that call answer that call at least respond back to them if you are busy like i got calls right now too but I, i'm texting them back without even you guys knowing that but i'm texting them back i'm in a meeting let me call you back as soon as this call, this podcast end my first thing will be I'm, i'll be calling them back right so, so Breeze, i want to drill down a little bit on that before you move on to the second item yeah uh, because there is a school of thought uh, out there that when you are in a client meeting, you stay focused with that client, that you're, you're, you're there mentally uh, and, and that you're present. And so taking a call is taking away from that. Um, talk to us about your mindset um, and, and, and how all of that goes, you know, as you're, you'll, you'll take a call. Todd was given the example of at lunch, you take the call and you just very quickly answer it, let them know how important they are to you and that you're going to call them back as opposed to what many agents will do is take the call and it turns out to be a five minute call or an eight minute call, uh, which, uh, I mean, let's call it what it is. It's a distraction and it's rude to the person that you're with. Um, so so talk about that balance a little bit more. So it's true that it can be a distraction. So uh, obviously, if you are in, in something during, like if you're talking to a client at that time and there is something that you're, nego- and you're working on negotiating on something, I would, I would not suggest you take a call at that time. Just like make sure that you have, a, like I have on my default messages, it says, I'm in a meeting, let me call you back once it's done. Or I, I have another one like uh, it's I'm on on another call. Let me call you when I'm done, when I'm off. So these are few of the uh, few of the media, uh, the thing like text messages that I have. The other thing is if you are getting a call and then you are asked uh, like you basically have to make sure that that call does not go over a minute. Very honestly, mm, like there's people the would right like there. Thank yeah, pe- people would love to talk, but you have to mm-hmm. let them know. I'm really can I really cannot talk right now. Let me call you back. Yeah. And yeah, that's it. If right. they if they can't respect your time, that kind of tells you about about that person too. So if you want to work with that that kind of person, it's up to you at that time. Well, the thing that that I just saw over and over again, and you've done it multiple times too over the years as we've been there, you just had a way of making me feel special because you were with me. And you made the person who called feel special enough that you were going to interrupt and take their call. But you couldn't have the full conversation. You made both of us feel sex, uh, special. So I guess there for me is a little bit of the magic sauce where yeah, oftentimes yeah. agents will it's, just let it go to voicemail completely right, and right. just won't answer. And then they'll take two hours to get to him back. I mean, when we were saying goodbye at lunch, he's walking to his car and I saw him already pick up his phone. He already starting to dial and call sure, him back. And, sure. and for me, I could respect that. Yeah. I, I just, I love it because it spoke of your servant heart, your service. And, and where I was headed with it is how how do you do that? How do you balance that and make everybody uh, feel special? And and I believe you answered that, um, but that but was, that was know, the question that I was trying to ask. Yeah. But you have to know Todd is special. <laughs> <laughs> Todd right. is special. I appreciate that. All right, on answer your phones, number one. What are a couple of answer the other things? Answer your phone, number one. Uh, number two, teach your other, uh, treat your other agents either they even if they are brand new agents or older agents uh, at the same level of respect that you uh, that you think you deserve wow a wow. lot of people a lot That's, of people don't do that a yeah. lot of people do not do that nope um there's there's a lot of um grumbling between agents you know and 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 when agents are are bickering amongst themselves how easy is it to put a transaction together no it's not it's All right not. Yeah, it is not like you have to remember that the agent is basically a messenger. I'm a messenger. That's all. You won't don't shoot the messenger. That's it. I'm a messenger, and I understand that you like the other side. That agent is also a messenger. That's all. So I just want to let him know that I like even I've done deals with brand new agents where they don't have any info. The guy literally called me. I cannot forget this. The guy literally called me and uh, asked me, how do you open a contractor lockbox? Like he did not have an idea how to open a contractor lockbox also. Right. But what I did, 
I said, you know what? Don't worry. Okay, this is what you do. See this number. I, I helped him out. I helped him. We we got the transaction done. We dealt with the transaction. He got his check, his first check ever. So he was very appreciative about that. And he like, let me take you out for a drink. I'm like, no, don't worry about it. We'll 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 meet uh, eventually, and we'll we'll uh, work on that uh, afterwards. But don't worry about it. Just this earlier this month, uh, like actually in uh, in middle of November. He texted, he emailed me. He's like, Breeze, I just want to let you know I changed my brokerage and I wanted to say hi to you. That's all. Like he, He's still oh, reaching out. Cool. He's still great. reaching out. That's I have great. agents calling me and telling me their own off-market deals just because, uh, and these are like agents that have been doing a lot of transactions. The, they, other, I've heard of uh, other agents saying that I can't even get hold of her, but that agent is calling me. I have an off-market deal. Do you want it? That's how I get off market deals from huge. other agents from different country companies. Right. Right. My clients are happy at that time. So answer your calls, be helpful, be respectful to other agents. And that third thing, off. third things you start using a CRM. I, my business has gone on autopilot quite a lot of it because of CRM. Mm -hmm. A good CRM will always help you out. Uh, people don't choose the technology and I was one of them. I'm not going to say that I've been doing it from day one. I was one of them. I some kind of like pushed me to it and I have started using it and I love it. Like Do I you have it. a favorite one because our listeners are going to want to know what you're using. My opinion is um, the best one to use is the one that you will actually use. Right. And, and, but uh, just out of curiosity, what have you found that you're, that you're liking that you're using today? I've tried using um, line desk. Mm -hmm. wasn't that wasn't that uh, happy with that i used kv core i loved it but i didn't like the price on it and it's kv core is one of the most expensive crm out there mm -hmm. then uh we just moved to lofty also known as chime chime yep yep and it does everything that kv core does but at a much 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 cheaper price it's very inexpensive compared to kv4 and i love i love chime i love chime uh i have i'm using it i'm it gets me like even for my business transactions to commercial transactions it, it's putting that business also on autopilot so i'm i'm happy the initial conversations is taken care of by chime i don't have to worry about that right so for those uh home smart agents go into the home smart marketplace you can see all our CRM partners, but that's where you can get connected with Let Chime or get connected with your broker, which is how uh, Breeze did this through Isom, his broker. So thank you, Isom. Uh, all right, so one, two, two three. More. Two number more. Four. Okay. okay, number four. Uh, definitely get involved with your local and your state association. What? Wait a minute. Say more about that because there are people out there that say that volunteering your time at, at the association or anywhere in the real estate realm is a waste of time. Um, so talk to us more. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm sorry that I've actually heard about that too from our agents, from home smart agents, from other agents too. But when they ask me, how do you succeed? I am success I'm successful because of my local association and my state association. Why? Because the people that are in the local association volunteering, guess what? They are the top producers in the area. They're actually the top producers in the area. And when I am connecting with them, uh, like at, at a personal level on like with these top producers, they get to know me. They want to work with me. They want to be like, Oh, Breeze has good moral ethics. Breeze has good uh, ethical background for real estate, and most of these local associations they only work. They only want volunteers who have good ethics, and they will like you will be able to succeed in in uh, in in those roles in those volunteer roles if you have good good ethic good ethics. If you have a complaint, they they are not gonna like make you a treasurer or board of director. I'm a I'm right now a treasurer. Next year I'm going to be the president elect for the local association. What that? What does that tell? First thing to other agents that my track record is clean, right? So they don't have to worry about that. Then I am an ethical agent, and they want, and that's the other reason that they are want to work with me because, like, okay, I get that title from the local association, and they want to work with me. Oh, maybe I I want to say like, I want to be friends with this guy. He has a lot of knowledge. 
Well, in, in this business, we talk about it all the time. With our clients, it's about relationships. Mm -hmm. With other realtors, it's about relationships. It is. And yeah. when you're serving at that level, um, I just, I've seen you in action with other, I've seen you in action there at your local board because through you, I've been asked to speak at your local board on marketing, et cetera. And just seeing the relationships that you have as you walk around the building, and I can only imagine what it's like when you're working on projects and initiatives and community for your local area. I'm sure those relationships are very powerful. Yeah, um, I'm actually, we just donated, yesterday we donated $65,000 to Salvation Army from a committee that I was chairing. Great. And fantastic. $65,000, I mean, we have donated more also from that committee, but even with this, uh, this year being down, for the real estate industry, people were still people still pulled up. They still donated, and on top of that, the way uh, like with the way the story, uh, the state association is helping and the local association is helping is also helping me create a good PR. I'm actually going to be on the Channel Three News tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, giving up uh, giving out updates for real estate in the local market. Guess what? My face is going to be in front of a lot of people, and when they see my face. They would like at in in one of their advertisements on their on on a flyer or anything. They would want to like uh, talk to me more about it. They were, I've seen this guy before. Right. Uh, I've been uh, like, and this is not the first time I'll I'll be on Channel Three. This is uh, in two months. This will be the second time I was on Channel Three on November twentieth. Also, when we uh, Channel Three, Fox Forty, ABC Ten, all these three news uh, news channels were there, and we were building a can tree for the Salvation Army. Right, and that country basically brings in a, uh, and attracts more people, and then we uh, we are able to get more donation for the Salvation Army. And when we were building that, I'm the chair for that committee, and I was getting interviewed. Love that. All right, so that's so, idea, that's tactic number four. What's your number five? Number five, real estate is about all about relations. It's all about relation. Have a good relation with your clients. Treat them uh, respectfully. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's, if they are buying a two hundred thousand dollar house or they are buying a million dollar house. A two hundred thousand dollar house guy can turn into a million dollar house very soon. You you have you have no idea. I, right. My first transaction was with a client, um, like a client from who I used to de deliver phone calls to. He bought his first house through me, four hundred forty thousand. Right now he's looking for a two million dollar house. And over the period of time, he has given me so many referrals that I I have I can easily say that because of his referrals, I have been busy constantly just because of his referrals. Love that. So referrals, approximate size of your database. If you were to open up your contacts in your phone right now, what's that number of contacts or the number in your Chime database? Do you know? The number in my Chime database is probably around 1,000. And the okay. uh, number on my phone is easily over 3000 that's great easily that's, over 3000 and uh, these awesome. are my repeat clients that's and awesome. when you moved to this country how many did you have in your phone uh, I, I know I, I can imagine the number here so but go it was 3000 minus 3000 <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. yeah that's that's what i was getting at yeah. yeah. Hey, well yeah. A, uh, backing up a little bit, talk, you know, about your your um, servanthood with some of the associations or organizations and building community. Can you talk a little bit about your time with the YPN network, the Young Professionals yeah. Network? Before that, that, let me let me touch on what Rich was saying. Rich, at my wedding reception, I had 250 people showed up at my wedding reception and only two relatives from who flew from India. Everybody else was a friend or a client. Most of most of them were clients who had turned into friends, and they still they still call me like whatever whenever they need anything. That's, That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So getting back to the young professional network. Uh, so how that happened was I joined Home Smart, and my broker who was a part of Home uh, Young Professional Network at that time said, "Why don't you come to this party with me?" Uh, we had oh, that's gala. how it starts. That's how it <laughs> yeah. starts. Yeah, yeah. They lure us in with a party. <laughs> I went. I went to the party. It was fun. I did my moves. And uh, I'm see. <laughs> I'm dance giving, moves. 
I did my dance moves. I'm giving you a good <laughs> segue for the dance. next question. <laughs> and then uh, I did my dance moves every like it was fun. Uh, and then next time he like a uh, couple of weeks later he was like, "Please, we I'm going to that. Uh, remember that gala? I'm like, yeah. So let, I'm going to their uh, committee meeting. Why don't you tag along with me? I'm like, okay. So I went over there, and I think it was his last meeting at that time. And he said, "I'm actually going to step away." I want you to take my uh, take my seat next year. So I kind of joined. The first year I was just observing, not much. But second year I became the subcommittee chair for the gala and we did a pretty good job. But since because of that YPN, I got started getting recognized by the other volunteers and they helped me get up and pull me up into a uh, pretty senior roles. Uh, I joined real estate in 2015 and I started volunteering in 2016 and I'm already in 2023, not, not that long, like seven years. I'm already a treasurer mm -hmm. for the board of, uh, for the local board. I'm going to be the president elect in next year in 25. I'll be the first Indian president in 117 years of history of Sacramento decision of realtor. Wow. And cool. that's on awesome. Top of that. Thank you. On top of that, I'm also, a board of director for California Association of Realtor, <clears throat> one of the few Indians, actually the only turban Indian that you see on the board. And it's a pretty big board, like almost like 700, 800 people on the board. Right. And I'm only like, this next year will be my third year as a board of director for the uh, for CAR. I'm already, and I'm already going to chair the state association's uh, young professional network. Oh, excellent. Way to go, Breeze. Yeah. That's quite an honor. Thank that you. Is. So I'm, I'm getting recognized by even the state associations, uh, like leadership people. Like they, I can easily say that they're good friends of mine now. That's and great. when you, it's all about relation, like I said. It so is. So it helps. It is. And because of that, get and the next step that I'm doing, uh, because of these associations work, I'm actually getting... Um, in touch with these political uh, people in the local association, in the local in the local arena, and the uh, the political uh, people in the state uh, state arena too. So, what's that going to help me out? Is like, um, if I have some, like, if I'll be able to talk to them and help our uh, our industry and our clients protecting their uh, what do you call protecting their real estate property rights. We'll be work, working and fighting that. Great. Yeah. All right. So I have a couple quick rapid fire questions for you. What okay. do you love most about My what family. you do? Family. Family. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Um, what was a mistake you made that wish, you wish someone would have given you some information to avoid that mistake in building your real estate business? I should have joined real estate earlier. Mm. I should have joined real estate earlier. That's a good one. Yeah. That's great. Um, we often will will ask, hey, do you wish someone would have told you something earlier, like a secret? Like, what's your best kept secret that you're like, wow, I wish I would have known that a long time ago. I guess it kind of goes hand in hand with you should have started earlier, but a best kept secret or best something kept you secret. wish someone would have told you. Best kept secret is start using a CRM from day one. From Great. day one. Last question. Walk us through a, a couple of days in a week in the life of Breeze. Like, what do you do? You have a daily routine. Are they the same? What do you do when you get up in the morning? And do you ever sleep? When do you sleep? <laughs> but what's your uh, what's your daily routine? So I wake up around seven. Um, go downstairs and like. Uh, basically get ready and go downstairs and uh, hang out with my nephews and niece, my nephew and niece. Um, once I'm like one and have a breakfast with a home cooked meal for breakfast from my mom or my wife, me and my brother, we all live in one big giant house. It's like a joint family. So that's the best part that I enjoy. And then after meal, I go to the office or maybe the association. If I have a meeting at the association, Go to the office, start working, start answering calls. If I need to follow up on some emails, I do that. 
uh, pretty much work from nine to five, but definitely take a break for your meal. I have learned to enjoy my meal that 30 minutes, that 30 minutes is going to take me some time. Like that, that 30 minutes for is for me, like for having my meal. I want to sit down and have a meal. Like if that, if I don't enjoy that meal, I'm not, I'm working for these kind of uh, luxuries. Like this is the luxury that I want. Right. Sit down and have a meal. So I want that. Um, and five, like I work from nine to five, six, sometimes even seven also. And after seven, hang out with uh, one hour for, with my friends. That's my downtime. Go home and then, uh, Go home, have another meal with the family, and uh, chill out with the wife, and that's it. Go to sleep by like around 10, 10 30. Okay. Rinse and repeat. We do it yep. again the next Rinse day. Rinse and repeat. Yep. Saturday okay. and Sunday, I've started enjoying that a little bit more. Thanks to uh, my thanks to my team. Right. Great. Yep. Well, Rich, what, how about you? What other questions do you have? You have a rock star. Here. I, I, I uh, just you know? like the fact that we had five rapid fire things from Breeze. I like it. Uh, and and he's good. got them. And so, uh, I mean, that's just great information. Yeah. And uh, right. Uh, so, I'm, I'm ready to dance. You. I'm ready to dance in February. <laughs> there we go. Dre's. Growth is, Summit, the, Las Vegas. The dance floor at Dre's. Here we come. Yes, Right. That's right. for our grades. That's awesome. And you have such a, a dynamic um, brokerage group up there in Sacramento. Um, it's always a fun time when you have Sacramento in the house. Yep. Up in Las Vegas. So uh, you want me? Great. You want me to say that right now? Or no, that? no, no, no. We'll save that for Las Vegas. If you want to know no, what that phrase that. is, you gotta come to Las Vegas. So yeah, but uh, hey, we 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 really appreciate you. Um, one thing that I also you know have observed is you also are so helpful to other agents in your brokerage and just the time and. Um, and the way you've even you have a network here among home smart agents across the country and i see you on social media i see you in um, some of the you know workplace chats etc and you know i just thank you for doing that for spending time with other agents but can you talk a little bit about building that last national that national network as the last thing here before we go I yeah. very honestly, I started building that network thanks to you guys. Uh, I showed up at the my first ever uh, growth summit was probably 21, 2021 when we did uh, when when I showed up and I think that was amazing. It was a good experience. I still remember Kate Svensson. I met her in a coffee line. She gave me her business card, and that that was a unique idea. Like it had a metal business card with the with a bottle opener and I had that uh, business card with me all the time 2022 when she met me I remembered her that's the same lady with the with that business card and I like absolutely love her I connected much better with her uh, last year uh, when, when we were there like actually not yeah last year when we were there I connected much better uh, with her and these are the uh, relations that you can develop like now me and her we bounce off ideas between how like about how to manage our team and all that stuff and that's what uh, it's all about that's for like you cannot be afraid oh i don't want to give my secret sauce sometimes sharing that secret sauce can make you <laughs> make you more happy more happier more content and more popular too remember right. that Remember, the other thing is now I know for a fact that anything happens in Sacramento and if I miss it on uh, Workplace or on the Facebook chat, I know Kate Swenson has my back. She's texting. She's texting over there. You should just go to Breeze. <laughs> That's great. That's it. I so, that. I mean, yep. this is all this is how all it should be about. And uh, I've actually uh, even at the state level, when I uh, go to the state association meetings, that's the same thing. Even at home smart level, also nationwide, it's about all about networking. If you don't have a good network, you're worthless. Very honestly, right. right? Your network is your net worth. Like that. That's Breeze. Actually... Would would you ever miss a growth?
how can agents find you on social media, find your brother, um, your team, you know, give us some of the details. So for me and my brother, just like for me, basically Google Realtor Breeze Singh, that's Realtor Breeze, B-R-E-E-Z-E, Singh, S-I-A-G-H. And you'll find me on social media. That's my handle for Instagram. That's my handle for Facebook. It's pretty much pretty simple. Uh, if you or you can look it up on my website, real uh, breeze at realtorbreeze.com. For Raj, it's uh, Realtor Raj Singh. Again, kept, kept it simple. That's mm -hmm. how you can find him on Instagram or on Facebook. And then uh, for our team, it's Luxcom, L U X E C O M M dot com. That's something that happened in, earlier this year in the beginning. Me and another team member, uh, another team in Homes for IKEA merged together, creating a I, mega team. I actually, thank you for bringing that up. I meant to talk about that because I saw something on social media about that two or three weeks ago. Uh, I saw a little video, a little uh, clip. Uh, tell us about that. Tell us about Luxcom. What are you doing? So Bonnie Smith, who is my other team leader, me and Raj, we are the three team leaders on uh, on Luxcom. Uh, Bonnie had her own team and uh, me and Raj had our team sync. We were always competing with each other and we decided why should we compete with each other when we can compete, join our forces together and compete with the local market much in a much better way. We can be, rather than being two large teams, we can combine our forces together and be a mega team where we can cater to commercial, residential, and luxury business. So that's why it came to Luxcom, luxury and commercial. Love that. And the graphics, the marketing, all of it is top notch. Good Thank you. Good job on that, by the way. We right just right. had to wait for DRE, our DRE to approve that name okay. and it took a while. It was a nightmare. It took a while, but once it's done, now we are promoting it head on. That's awesome. Good there for you. you go. Fantastic. Thank well, you. Congratulations on that. And, uh, you know, uh, love Bonnie as well. So we're really excited for you on that too. Thank you. And what you're doing up there. So good job. Well, uh, thank you all for joining us today. This has been fascinating. Just a um, wonderful talk. Are with we you, out of time always, already? You know? Wow. Yeah. It just blows well, How'd by. that happen? We're Breeze, gonna... this was this was very educational and, of course, an awful lot of fun. It's it's great having you on the show. Uh, great uh, chatting with you. Uh, and I can't wait to see you in Vegas. Uh, yes, you get Todd sooner. Yeah. <laughs> but I have to wait for Vegas. Yep. I, well, I'm looking forward for that. Yeah. Well, we'll have you on in a couple of weeks and we'll do a follow up on Luxcom and how that's all um, going and uh, just wish you the best. Hope you have a great uh, end of this, the year here with you and your family and all your friends and um, just really appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thank yeah. you, Rich, for being here today as well. Absolutely. Thank and, you, Todd. Uh, thank you, and audience. If we, uh, to, to our audience, if we hit a nerve. Uh, today and you like our content give us a thumbs up we like thumbs up we we that gives us the indicator that we're on the right path and if you have some uh, good feedback we're open to that too let us uh, know so let yeah. us know down below in the comments yep uh, but uh, glad you're here breeze thank you again uh awesome awesome time together uh, and uh, so yep. yeah i appreciate you guys a lot and thank you for having me well, thank you for joining us. So this has been another amazing episode here of the Real Estate Podcast. We hope you think it's been amazing as well. Please join us back on future episodes. And Breeze, thank you. We'll see you all back on future episodes. Take care. We'll see you Bye. next time. Like what you're hearing on the Real Estate? Tell your friends about us. Tell them to check out all of our episodes on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. And don't forget to send any topics you want us to tackle to the real estate at homesmart.com.